Good morning, everybody. Do you hear me? Okay, we have something to adjust. It sounds quite stuff. second lectures will be devoted to <coughs> study first W and Z and then uh, top uh, quarks. Uh, w and Z are standard candle for <coughs> many reasons, are very important. Uh, once you have uh, understood uh, the basic properties of uh, PP collisions, uh, basically you are in a good shape to start uh, identifying the heavy bosons that were discovered in 1984 by Carlo Rubio and others. And to study those bosons means uh, that you have the possibility to identify uh, particles that are background, basic background to searches for new physics, but also to study in itself uh, he heavy bosons that are in itself interesting because they might show at large statistics some anomalies. In addition, as I was um, alluding to you yesterday, those are typical, like a test beam. So you have a huge number of Z, so you have a source of electrons or muons or taus that you can study to optimize your selection criteria on those purely selected uh, decay modes. So it's absolutely important and mandatory to go through this exercise. If you want to address new physics, nobody will believe you that you are able to do new physics if you don't show them that you're able to measure very well this cross-section, which are huge extremely large cross-section in the region. <coughs> so let's start with the experimental signatures of W and Z. Uh, if you are a physicist at LHC, uh, you want to reconstruct a Z, you look for a pair of charged leptons, in this case two muons. Uh, you ask uh, the two leptons be at high PT, larger than 20 GeV, for example, 15, 20, 30 GeV. You ask them to be isolated, you look for opposite charge, looking at the curvature in the magnetic field, and then you form the invariant mass of the system, and you ask the invariant mass of the system to be between typical value 60 and 120, so a bit uh, larger, let's say safer, with respect to the 91.2 mass of the, of the Z. <coughs> uh, for the W, uh, basically, <coughs> you look for one lepton, in this case an electron, there is a neutrino, so you have uh, missing uh, ET here. Usually, both in the Z and in the W, you shouldn't dream of having nothing else. There is always some adronic recoil, which means some tracks that are participating in the event. Usually, it's low PT stuff, so usually you don't have huge energy here, but you have some energy in the event. Uh, you reconstruct the uh, electrons, uh, and then you associate to the electron the, the missing uh, energy, the missing transverse energy. Typical PT is again 20 GeV, you ask them to be isolated, there is nothing around the electron in a certain cone. And then you compute the transverse mass. Transverse mass is, uh, is the typical uh, distribution that you use to identify the presence of a W in the event, the uh, Jacobian peak there. Uh, those are the, how the events appear in real data, in real event display. So you can even recognized by eye uh, what is happening there. Uh, this is the W, and this is, a, this is the Z, two, two muons. So it is relatively straightforward. And you see there is some activity associated to the, to the production of this heavy object, but uh, the activity is not really uh, too, too relevant. Uh, and around the uh, electron or the uh, muons, in this case, you have basically nothing. These are the selection criteria. Uh, there are, however, <coughs> uh, subtleties, as, I mean, there is nothing easy at the LHC. Uh, if you want to do things correctly, you have to uh, take into account that jets can fake leptons. Eh? So, this is a typical event in which uh, you have jets, maybe a very visible. But, uh, for example, sometimes the electromagnetic energy in a jet uh, fluctuates, uh, and so, 
you have a track because the jet contains track, you have a fluctuation of the electromagnetic energy, and you can easily uh, think that you are looking at an electron, and while actually you are reconstructing a jet in which there is a, a, an anomalous release of electromagnetic energy. So you, it's easy to fake uh, leptons uh, with uh, the jets. And so the first thing you have to do, you have to evaluate this background. So you cannot uh, <coughs> simply reconstruct uh, using the selection criteria everything. And uh, you have to, uh, to carefully evaluate this background. In particular, the Z, you see the background to the Z is very low, but the ground to the W is not negative. So if you want to measure well the cross-section and the production cross-section of the W, MW, the jets, and other, you have to measure very well this uh, component. Uh, the good news for, <coughs> for the W and Z is that the theoretical prediction are known uh, at the next to next reading order. So we have a very good description of what is happening. So we have very good theoretical predictions. The, there has been a huge amount of work done by French theorists, and we are able to predict, uh, to have very good prediction, and to check with the experimental data if the predictions are correct or not. I give you an example, uh, the case of background, of what I was uh, describing you yesterday, of techniques uh, to evaluate the background in non-trivial case. Uh, this is one. So again, you have selected uh, a sample of uh, leptons and you have computed the transverse mass. The transverse mass show clearly a Jacobian peak, which is the W. Uh, but there is a component of uh, background which uh, you can attribute to electroweak processes or QCD processes, I described you before. So if you want, uh, <coughs> there are two approaches here. You can cut strongly here at missing a transverse mass of 50, for example, and then the purity is, is enhanced. Or you can leave the entire distributions, try to fit uh, the best you can the background component. But this is a typical example in which uh, you cannot use naive uh, methods. You have to use something more sophisticated. And you have to understand very well this background distribution. In particular, you cannot rely on the Monte Carlo to understand the tails of the background that goes beyond, uh, below the signal. So you have to, to do it uh, using data. <coughs> this is an example of the things that you do, for example. You, uh, uh, you, you try, in, in this case, uh, you, you, you try to invert uh, the selection criteria. To identify W, you ask uh, leptons to be isolated. Uh, if you ask leptons not to be isolated, then you enrich the sample of background uh, events uh, and you decrease uh, the signal component in the, in the sample. And actually, if you plot the isolation variable, you see that uh, with, with low value, with a large, uh, say, in this region, there is basically no signal. The, the signal is only in the region in which basically there is nothing around the electron. Neurons. So now you have a almost pure sample of the ground if you cut properly. You cut here, for example, and then here you have the signal selection, and here you have the background distribution. Both are equally important. So it's very important to have high purely uh, signal selection, but it's also very important to have a very good description of the background. And actually, if you have the possibility to do it, then you can plot in the transverse mass in inverted cuts of the background. And now, once you fit the transverse mass and you adjust your Monte Carlo prediction to the data, then you can come back and then you can extrapolate what will be the shape or the, uh, the, the, the absolute value, the normalization value of this background in, uh, in, real, in real event. This is, this is what is done. You see here, now, this part, this part which is background is relevant only for the W. You see, the Z basically there is no background, so it's, uh, it's, it's basically okay. You, you can do something maybe in electrons, but in muons there is basically nothing. Why you you fit the background components using this inversion, and you are able to identify with high precision, with low systematic errors, the um, the production of W. So this is the way in which we do uh, something of this measurement, and this is why in terms of production cross-section, you reach a quite uh, uh, sizable uh, level of precision, particularly once you uh, compute, as in this case, the ratio between the two uh, 
production cross section, in the ratio, ratio in, in the ratio of the systematic cancer, so you can have a very good uh, precision. So this is the way in which the inclusive W and Z cross section were produced, and you see that they fit, they, they fall on top of the prediction. So that basically, uh, we have proved that uh, basically there is no big surprise in production of W and Z at the NHC, and Atlas points are <coughs> invisible because they overlap uh, with CMS points. So basically, at that moment, you think that you are understanding what is happening in terms of production of electrons. Uh, you can even uh, try to exploit the precision you have uh, to produce plots in which you have, uh, the, the, let's say, in a scattered plot, uh, the branching ratio W in lepton neutrino, Z in uh, lepton lepton. And these, uh, uh, these ellipses are, let's say, sensitive to the different PDF sets. You might see that there are different uh, uh, predictions that are basically uh, depending on the different uh, PDF sets. So you can use this uh, cross-section measurement uh, to constrain uh, the particle, um, the particle uh, distribution function. So, so you can add to theory some, you can e go and uh, use as an input of theory some uh, experimental data. Then you can become more ambitious. Then you have produced the inclusive uh, production. You can go differential. You can, you can try to see what is the differential distribution of Z uh, and W uh, versus uh, rapidity, versus pseudo-rapidity, and then you can check again uh, different uh, part of flavor configurations. You can uh, uh, try to, to look for charge asymmetries. Charge asymmetry, again, very sensitive to the PDF. Here you see an example of Atlas in which uh, those are the experimental point and uh, red or blue, there are different uh, predictions uh, in different Monte Carlo tunes. So uh, these are, in some sense, precision studies of electroweak parameters that are used to understand better what is happening at LAC. But the main goal, remember, is to understand W and Z, and later on you will see W and Z plus jets as major background sources to the search for new physics and to the search for the x model. However, there is also an intrinsic content. So as soon as you improve the precision of this measurement, the LHC is, is not a precision machine, but if you do things properly, it can be a precision machine. And this was one of the examples in which uh, quite quickly we were able to produce measurements that were, uh, let's say, in terms of precision, quite challenging. These are another set of measurements, just to give you an idea, uh, again, the same uh, W charge uh, asymmetry, which is sensitive to the PDF. You see, for example, the need to change uh, uh, some of this tune to fit the data that were with some tension with this uh, uh, yellow prediction, for example. This is another example. So this is a, an interplay between the data and theory, which continue forever, basically. You produce additional measurement, and you have uh, better predictions, and you tune the prediction according to the data. And then you start uh, something which is more challenging, because again, here you don't have a, a clear and, and, uh, and very well understood Monte Carlo predictions. Uh, you have very well understood uh, theory predictions for the W and Z inclusive cross-section, but as soon as you add jets to W and Z, Monte Carlo prediction becomes a bit flatter. And so you shouldn't believe too much the Monte Carlo prediction. You have to look at the data and then adjust the Monte Carlo prediction to reproduce the data. And this is what has been done. As soon as you, as you take W and Z plus jets, one, two, three, four jets, and again, this is one of the major background to the searches for new physics. Whenever, whenever there is a W plus a certain number of jets or a Z plus a, number, a certain number of jets, you have to understand very well this background. And this is why you see now the differences, in this logarithmic case, so the differences between the data and some of the prediction is huge. Uh, and the, the difference increases with the number of jets. So this is an example in which uh, you have to produce your own uh, understanding of the, of the background using the data before moving ahead. Uh, so there, there were some Monte Carlo tunes that were adequate, but other that were completely inadequate. Again, and in principle, you don't know which tube you have to choose. So only data and agreement with data in Monte Carlo will tell you the, what, uh, what should be done. And again, you can continue. You can go, for example, uh, looking for the, the, the 
the angle between uh, once Z is produced in association with the jet, uh, you can plot uh, the angle between the Z and the jet uh, and try to see again in different uh, Monte Carlo uh, simulation, once you have one jet, uh, two jets or three jets, uh, how well uh, that there is the, that they describe this opening angle between the Z and, and the jet. And the same is true for the, the Delta Phi versus different. Uh, things uh, as of today have become more and more uh, sophisticated. Uh, uh, today at LHC you can uh, not only measure well uh, the events in which you have W or Z uh, plus jets, but you can also understand the flavor content of the jet which is associated to the W and jet. In this case you use a uh, V-tagging algorithm, so you can, you can identify, for example, uh, uh, in this particular case, uh, the associated production of uh, a Z plus uh, B jets. Eh? Again, the trick here is to assign a flavor to the jet using B-tagging algorithms. B-tagging algorithms work very well at LHC. And so if you, have, if you use uh, a B-tagging algorithm which is very strong, very strict, very pure, you might uh, select a sample of events in which uh, you associate to a Z or to a W um, a particular flavor of a particular and again, you can uh, uh, try to describe what you, what you see and you compare it with predictions. Another thing that is very important, absolutely important, you might uh, LHC is a, is a discovery machine. And uh, again, some of the discovery tools are very simple tools. We'll see later today in the, in the second lecture. For example, we are going to use muons, dimuons, or dileptons, or dijets, or diphotons simple uh, search tools that are used to discover new physics. Eh? But again, if you, if you don't understand well the background, uh, the electronic background component to these uh, search tools, uh, your search will be hopeless. This is why, for example, we spent a lot of time in studying the drill down production eh, in dimuons or in dielectrons. And you see that we need to study from 10 GeV up to 1.5 TeV. And the, the same is true for the elect dielectrons. And you need to understand very well, the, 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 let's say, the, how well data are reproduced by the Monte Carlo prediction, because, again, we look for heavy, massive state of, of matter here in the TV region. And so nobody will believe that you have a bump in the dimuon distribution or in the dielectron distribution if you don't show that you have understood the Drell-Yan, which is one of the main background components in this, uh, in this, uh, in this area. And then you have to go through one of the most difficult exercises because, again, uh, once you, you have uh, in the event di boson, which is uh, W plus gamma, Z plus gamma, 2W, W, WZ, or ZZ, basically you are in uh, studying cross section which are very similar to the X production cross section. And for example, WW is, uh, or ZZ, those are irreducible background in some sense to the X going to WW or X going to ZZ. So you have to study those uh, electroweak processes if you want to address the, 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 or try to address the discovery of the X boson. In addition, this kind of processes are particularly eventually sensitive also to new physics because you, you probe the triple gauge coupling uh, vertex, which is, which is uh, in principle sensitive to, to anomalies. So if something else enters into, into this uh, gauge, you, into, into this vertex, you can find uh, you can have a discovery. So, <coughs> again, you start with the simplest, W plus gamma, which, is, which are quite uh, abundant, and you try again still to measure, in this case versus ET, the, 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 the production cross-section uh, for uh, W gamma and Z gamma, and you try to compare the prediction. There is no, um, no major discrepancy. And then you address the WW production. Take a look to the to the, to the cross-section, we are talking now of uh, 40, 50 um, picobar of cross-section. So really we are entering, from the nanobar, we are really going down to something which is very close to the rare process that we are, that we are supposed to study. And again, now <coughs> you have, an, for example, you measure the cross-section of WW into leptin neutrino. This is a search, one of the most powerful search modes for the explosion. Uh, and again, uh, there, the, the name of the game is the following. If you don't understand 
the background component, which is uh, basically WW plus some Z plus J plus some top background. You see the three components, the most, most important three components are there. Uh, nobody will believe you that you have seen an excess in this distribution hinting to the fact that you have a, Z, a X boson coming in. Coming in eh? So, a good description of this uh, uh, distribution and uh, a good understanding of this cross-section is mandatory to understand uh, uh, if there is an excess here and there in this distribution. And I want you to note that uh, uh, still uh, we have a small problem here, which is not uh, critical for the discovery of the X boson, but uh, we should keep an eye on it, because it could be also hinting that something is happening. If you take a look to the, to the, to the prediction, uh, at next leading order, maybe next to next leading order will change the, the, the gain, as usual. Usually they increase something. But you see, both experiments measure more than 53, 52, with, uh, let's say, 5 or 6 uh, picobar error together, and there is some tension with the, with, the, with the expected value. So both experiments seem to see higher than expected uh, cross-section. Eh? We spent a lot of time there, because we were not sure if this is true or it is something wrong in our detector. And we measured again a TTV in CMS, for example, just to cross-check if this hint that we are measuring cross-section that were a bit higher was true or not. And actually, even a TTV there is the hint that we might see, uh, we might measure something, uh, something higher with respect to the expectation. Again, this is the case in which, uh, this is life, uh, you have a judgment. Up to now, I told you, we, we, you are happy because you see that the predictions matches quite well your, what you measure. But now you enter a difficult territory in which you have a prediction, which is not uh, perfect because it's the next thing in order, it's not, uh, uh, it's very difficult to extend it to next to next to next linear. This is what you have in your hand. And data tells you that uh, the, the rate you measure is higher. Uh, so what to do? Uh, is it true? Is it real? Is something, is, is a, something mismeasured in your, in your detector? These are our life. Uh, and then at the end, after having checked everything for months, uh, we concluded that it is real. Uh, we believe it is real. And we believe that the predictions are wrong. Uh, we don't think that we are seeing more WW with respect to prediction because we are underestimating the background or we, are, um, uh, we have uh, pollution due to, to, to events entering into the selection. So we think that those numbers are correct, but again, on this uh, we, should, uh, we should keep an eye because if uh, with additional precision this tension will become larger and larger and if uh, with new uh, theoretical predictions we, the tension will survive. It might even be that there is something else entering, entering into the game. So we should always open an eye on it. Eh? So this excess in the inclusive WW could be due to uh, inaccurate theoretical prediction, but could be also due to nature. So we could have some, something else entering the game, and we have not yet fully understood what it is. So we should be we should be careful there. So on this, for example, in the next few years, we continue studying because it might be that this small discrepancy could increase. And in this case, we should try to look for interpretation of this discrepancy if it becomes really three or four sigma discrepancy. Now it's too, it's too statistically not significant. But anyway, since the two experiments see the excess, and the excess is seen at two different energy, I start thinking that is something real. Uh, this is, again, is an open page that uh, will be probably uh, written, uh, concluded in a few years. And then you continue going down to uh, rare and rarer processes, in this case W and Z. So W and Z, now it is uh, 15, 17 uh, picobar expected. You see, there, here there is no, no difference. And this, this is a bit tricky. Eh? So we measure 19, expected 18. So the only uh, anomaly seems to be in the WW. Why WZ fits quite well the prediction. This is another hint that we might have something there, but uh, it's still uh, too early. And a very tiny amount of uh, events. Uh, really, we are approaching the region in which uh, we, 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 we are close to, to cross-section, to production cross-section, which are really similar to the, to the, to the X production cross-section time and ratio. And finally, this is the the last uh, 
component of major background for a particular channel set Z production. And again, an important component to be measured uh, if you want to be sure that you have understood your background uh, uh, component of these researches. Here it is the ZZ, and now the, the production cross section are uh, at the level of uh, uh, 8, 9 uh, picobar. And you see that basically it is very pure, but is again low statistics uh, uh, events. Uh, and. Uh, uh, quite uh, purely described. There is a small, uh, s very small discrepancy here in Atlas, but not, uh, not very serious. The points are a bit higher with respect to the distribution. But in a nutshell, I think that uh, with this uh, data, one should think that you are ready. You have, you, you have uh, results that are consistent with what you expect from the electroweak background, and you know reasonably well the major electroweak background to the, uh, to the searches for the standard model. You can put uh, limits on the triple gauge coupling, and in, in a nutshell, if you want to reach this point here, you have to go through all this. Eh? So you start with inclusive cross section, W and Z, then you add one, two, three, four jets, then you add the boson, gamma, and then the boson, W, W, Z, 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 and once you reach this point, you are ready to, to, to discover the Higgs if the Higgs is, uh, is in nature. Eh? So this was the, was the part. And this was done. Basically, in 2011. Uh, so, between end of 2010 and end of 2011, we went through this uh, entire uh, set of exercises uh, trying to master the electroweak background, major electroweak background processes for the searches for the kids. And there is another component of background and another interesting guy to be studied, which is the top quark. Uh, here is, uh, in this diagram, you have the production of a top and top uh, pair. At LHC, the top decays to uh, W and B. So basically, in this case, you have uh, uh, two B jets uh, and uh, another two, two uh, quark jets and then electron neutrino, which will be missing. But the, the thing that I want to highlight uh, is basically that this can be seen as a, as, as a laboratory eh? because the top contains a huge amount of uh, important information. You can measure the production cross-section, uh, you can measure the production systematics, you can look for rare non-standard model decays, you can look for single top production, which is a rare process that, however, should be studied if you want to, to, to master the background to rare decays. You could measure the properties of the top, the mass, the speed, the charge. You can use the top to measure the W helicity. Since you have two B-jets, the top also is a factory to understand your B-tagging capabilities because you have pure, is a factory of B-tagged jets. And so you, you can test through the top your B-tagging capability. You can measure your efficiency having uh, a standard candle for b forms, uh, And so on. So uh, you should see at the top as a, as a strange beast, uh, which is really, uh, since it is the heaviest quark, it is, uh, now we have discovered the Higgs boson, it is much uh, heavier than the Higgs boson. The coupling is the only quark uh, in which uh, the Yukawa coupling is close to one. So it is really something uh, anomalous in terms of the general behavior of the rest of the family. Uh, the lifetime is shorter than the adrenalization, so it's the only quark that we face before adrenalizing. So, there are several hints uh, that the quark, uh, the top quark uh, could be uh, a clue for uh, new physics. So if you, it has been discovered recently, 1995, there has been a lot of studies, but again, the top should be seen on one hand as something that should be studied because it is background to Higgs searches or to new physics searches, but should be seen also as, uh, as something important in itself. Because uh, if uh, you would be able to spot any anomaly in the top properties, this could be immediately hinted that there is new physics coming there. Since it is so heavy, it is particularly sensitive to something else that happens in, 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 uh, in the heavy part of the, of the spectrum. So the top production at LHC <coughs> is uh, basically true gluon fusion, uh, which is dominant at LHC. Uh, it is completely different from the Tevatron. At LHC we have basically 85% uh, the tops which are produced through gluon gluon fusion and 15% through quark annihilation, while uh, basically the opposite was the Tevatron. So we should be careful because there are 
we cannot compare always uh, one by one what we observe at uh, LHC with respect to what uh, it, it has been observed uh, at the Teverton Combine. The total cross-section are quite high, is 160 picobar. That means the LHC can be seen as a, as a top factor. Uh, actually, it is a top factory. And so if you want to study the top quark in detail, LHC is a beautiful machine because we have basically all capabilities, all basic tools that have been conceived to discover the Higgs. Uh, most of them can be used also to produce precision measurement of the top. What well, is this number is what? Is, um, uh, is this one, no? 1090. Right. Ah, this is, uh, is a factor uh, yeah. seven. Seven. seven, yeah, it's, uh, it's about 20. No, no, it's a, it's a huge, uh, there is a huge advantage in, in LHC to, to, to study the top. The only disadvantage is that uh, we produce proton-proton uh, so for the asymmetry. Unfortunately, it's the only area in which uh, there is a hint of a possible anomaly with respect to the standard model prediction. And uh, it's the only area in which at LHC we cannot do better than the Tevatron because basically the production is symmetric. So we don't have uh, the possibility to measure large asymmetries. That is, it has been done by CDF and this year. This is probably the only area in which we, we pay some price due to the dynamics of the, of the production. So, uh, however, the top uh, is, um, is, uh, it is quite a complex object. You have to, uh, basically, you can study it in three major, uh, three major ways. Eh? According to the WD case, uh, the, the top basically 100% goes to, to, to WB. And so there are three major decay modes that are used to study the top uh, uh, properly. And each one has advantages and disadvantages. Depending on what you want to do, you can address one or the other. For example, if you, if you ask uh, both W to decay uh, semi electronically, you have only two bjets, two neutrino missing ET, and then one electron and the muon or two muon or two electrons, so the two, two leptons coming from the WW decay. And this is very rare decay because the branching ratio is small, so the branching ratio really is 5%, dominated by the fact that you force the W to decay uh, uh, leptons. And uh, the background, however, is, is very small. Uh, basically, the background is only Z that you, I mean, this once you have two leptons, you, you might have. Uh, Z possible background the plus jets that would be responsible for this uh, the presence of the B jets. The missing ET you might have for certain reasons. Anyway, this is a is a pure it is a pure a channel, very pure but very low statistics. Right? So again, it depends on what you want to do. If you want really very high purity, this channel is by far the best. But if uh, it will be dominated by statistical uncertainty. So, for example, in some cases you want to have some purity still reasonable 30%, but large statistics, uh, in this case, uh, sorry, the large branching ratio 30%, uh, which means the large statistics. And some purity, because again, here you have two bjets, one W decay into uh, electron muon neutrino, and two other jets accompanying the event due to the other W. Again, in this case, the statistics become uh, sizable, and still having the electron or the muons, uh, you are able to uh, get uh, quite a nice uh, purity. Here, the challenge is probably the, the most difficult one. The statistics is larger because now it's roughly 50% decay mode, but you see here you have basically six jets, and uh, two of them are detagged. You can use it to, to tag the events, but the QCD background in this, uh, in this, um, in these events are, are uh, the ground is very large. So here, if you wish, uh, higher statistic but higher background because you have W plus jets. Uh, here you have even higher statistics but huge background, basically dominated by the QCD, the jets, the uh, <laughs> jets. These are typical top candidate in which you have, for example, two leptons. Uh, so what you see here, you see uh, <coughs> a muon and another muon here, missing the T, uh, so the two IPT particle. You have to take a look, the dimuon mass should be lower than, than the Z mass, because otherwise you, you might misinterpret it uh, as, a, as a Z plus J. You know? If it is a top, the dimuon or di or dilepton mass, uh, when there are different <coughs> levels, there is no question. But when they have the same level, dimuons or dielectrons, you should be careful. You should measure the mass of the system 
And if you want to be sure that it's a top, the mass of the system should be far away from the 60, 120 GeV that you, uh, in which we define the mass of the Z. Eh? So this is the, the, the first uh, approach. Then you look for jets. You should have at least uh, two jets. And then you should have some of these jets should be retired. should have a secondary vertex, which is compatible with the presence of, uh, of a big quark. So we have algorithms to do it. So you have to apply the algorithms. And then if you have two high PT leptons, missing ET, and two B tag jets, uh, there is no doubt that this is a, this is a top kind. Is the, is the high purity sample, in which uh, you have basically very negligible value. In this case, uh, it is an example of one lepton plus jet, but missing ET. So you have, again, a muon in this case. And then you have missing ET, which is sizable, 100 GV. And then you have uh, uh, jets. Uh, and at least uh, there is one jet which is bitagged. Eh? Sometimes you miss the bitagging, so, but at least if you have one jet bitagged and one left of high PT and missing ET, this is again high probability to be a good uh, top candidate. And this is the way in which you do the analysis, basically, to measure the cross section. If you, if you take a simply, you apply the basic selection and you plot the number of jets without beta, just uh, the number of jets in the events, and you see that basically uh, after the bin zero, in which, uh, which is dominated by the ground, basically you start seeing the red is the TT bar signal. You start seeing that uh, once you have two or three jets, uh, having had uh, basically after the, the previous selection, in this region you have already uh, high purity of, uh, of, uh, of, of top quarks. But if you really want uh, <coughs> to, to have a purity exceeding uh, 80 or 90 percent in some cases, it is enough that you apply one BTAC. Uh, if you apply, if you ask that one of these jets is beta, and then you again plot versus the number of jets, now one should be beta, and you see that basically the red dominates. If you apply two beta, clearly you, have, you can have a very pure sample of, of top quarks. So again, this is a hint that uh, the LHC is really a, a top factory in which uh, having such a huge statistics, you can apply very tight uh, cut. Uh, and really have a pure sample, or almost pure sample, of, of top quarks for precision study. So not only to study it as a background, but also to study it as a particle whose properties could be very interesting. This is another example in the semi-leptonic channel, in which uh, basically applying a cut on the secondary vertex mass, which, uh, which is equivalent to requiring there is a big quark <laughs> in, uh, in one of the jets. You see that the red the component becomes uh, stronger and stronger. Uh, so at the end, uh, I come to the, to the, to the summary of this uh, kind of measurements. I want to highlight uh, the complexity of the work that has been done by CMS and Atlas to measure the inclusive top cross-section. You see there are several measurements for each experiment in different decay modes. Uh, take, for example, CMS. Uh, lepton plus jets, uh, dilepton, hadronic. You see hadronic is, the precision is, uh, lower because, again, many jets and it's difficult, you don't have very high precision on the cross-section. Uh, the lepton plus jets uh, is, uh, is uh, very pure, but uh, the statistic is low. So at the end of the day, the most precise measurement comes from lepton plus jets, not the lepton, but the single lepton plus jets. But what is amazing is that if you put together everything, you see that basically you measure the, um, already now, you measure the the cross-section, the production cross-section, inclusive production cross-section of TT bar at LHC in two experiments with something like 6, 7, 8 percent precision, which is absolutely amazing. Eh? So again, the prejudice that LHC is not a precision machine that should be, should be removed. Eh? You can do highly precision studies. It requires a lot of work because the environment is not ideal. But this is an example of how precise things can be, can be made at LHC. And then uh, you, you, you check the say the rise of the, for example, we have measured also the cross-section at 8. These are the points at 7 and 8. You see, you can compare the points with the prediction. You see that the, the, the precision that we have are already challenging the prediction. So it is, uh, it is a challenge for our friend theorist. We, uh, the top, uh, you will see maybe tomorrow, uh, is an important uh, component of uh, the understanding of the universe. The mass of the top in particular should be measured with better precision with respect to what we know now, which is around 1 g. Eh? But again, to make it properly, we need 
a coherent effort between experimentalists and theorists because we need better predictions. And as of today, this band is too, uh, in terms of inclusive cross section, is too large. As you will see, also the band in terms of mass is too large. So we have to push together to reduce this. Uh, then, once you have a large sample of top, you can measure the top differential cross section versus the rapidity, and then you compare with different Monte Carlo production. Uh, Carlo simulations. Uh, you see that in, the, in terms of the top mass, uh, the, the Tevatron is still leading. Uh, the Tevatron has reached uh, a precision uh, of uh, the, the mass is 173.2 plus or minus 6 statistics plus or minus 0.8. But here you see the results on the data in 2011. So with the data of 2012, we'll improve this results. And already you see that uh, we are approaching quite uh, uh, nicely. And we are still dominated by, by systematic statistic, you see, we are already there. Again, with the small fraction of the data we have taken, we have already the same statistical accuracy of, uh, of uh, the Tevatron experiment. And we have to work on the systematics. But again, with additional data, you know that once you have more data, you can understand better the systematics. This is a simple rule that, uh, that is all about. However, it is already at the level of uh, one point uh, some and this is the, the summary of the, of the LSE top quark mass. If you put together the Tevatron and the LSE experiment, you see that okay, there is still some difference, but uh, the, the two measurements are, are, quite, are becoming quite compatible. And I imagine that in a, in a, in a couple of years, uh, this race will continue. The Tevatron will improve. I expect that their precision to 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Uh, Tennessee will try to do the same, maybe to reach a half a GeV. That would be fantastic for many, for many, many things that we better tomorrow. It is another area in which we need, uh, we need uh, effort. Mm -hmm. we need, uh, those are not uh, simple measurements. If you want precision measurement, you have to work a lot. Eh? So it's, uh, but this will probably be happen in the next, this year and the next one. But putting together 25 inverse spectra, most of this measurement basically were based on five inverse spectra. We have five times more statistics. Uh, another interesting exercise you can uh, uh, exploit the strong dependence uh, of theory cross section on mass of the top. Again, this is another exercise that was done. So you, you, you have the, the theoretical extrapolation, you have the measure cross section dependence, you have the points. Still, the error bars are too large, but it will be interesting to constrain uh, using different perspectives the, the top mass. You know, the top mass is one of the most fundamental parameters of, of the standard model, having implication of the running of the X potential, of the evolution of the universe. There are many areas in which uh, it plays a role, and is, 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 a, is, a, is a component, is a parameter that we have to measure with high precision. Uh, going uh, forward toward uh, rare processes that could appear as background processes in uh, the search for new physics, I cover the single top production, which is a rare, uh, a rare uh, process. Uh, is the electronic produ production of, uh, of, uh, of quark in the T channel, in the S channel, or in the TW channel with associated production. Uh, cross section again, are in the range between 15 and six, uh, 4 and uh, 60 picobar. So the first thing we measured was the T channel, and now we are facing the, the, the challenge of measuring the WT, and we are trying also to measure in the S channel, which is quite, uh, quite challenging. But this is anyway uh, an example of the first measurement we did again with uh, uh, basically one tenth of the statistics that we have today. But you can see how, uh, again, this is the, the, the cost state of the angle that we use as a one discriminating variable, uh, how pure t at a single top uh, um, distribution we can get uh, at LHC. And again, this will continue. We are already something better than 20%. Uh, we can extract the VTB already at 10% level, so we can uh, probe uh, not only um, that we understand the, the single top as background, but again, produce nice measurement. And this is the, the set of measurement that was done by, by uh, Atlas and CMS. Both measured the, the single top production in the T channel. The um, production cross section are with large error still, plus minus 20. Uh, but with increased statistics and with better understanding of the systematic aspect, a lot of improvement. And this is the recent result by CMS uh, and Atlas on the WT channel. 
again, cross-section now becomes 16, 20, and again, but you can have an idea of the purity of the sample you can get, again, it's exploiting the bit tagging capability. You see, two jets, two bit tag, two jets, one tag. So basically, you have a purely, you can repeat with the single top what you've done with the, with the top and the top. You can have pure sample of single top quarks to be studied in detail, which is another interesting number. And then you can use, for example, uh, the top uh, as uh, a tool for new physics, for example. Uh, flavor changing neutral currents in the top sector are uh, extremely small in the standard model, the order of 10 to the minus 13, 14. And so if you measure any signal, any anomaly in this rare decay, and for example, this is a way in which you can, you can test this kind of, of, uh, of flavor change, looking for a decay of the top in a quark and Z, so this would be the, the, the decay mode that you look for, you, you, could have, you could use the top as a clue for new physics. Again, if you, sign, if you find an anomaly there, it's a direct sign that there is new physics entering. Unfortunately, this is not the case today. Uh, the branching ratio, uh, the sensitivity that we have is, is very, very small, so we cannot uh, say much. Uh, but again, this will continue with new statistics. Again, we have to consider the fact that uh, when LHC will uh, continue running, we will have uh, millions and millions of top quarks in a purely uh, pure set. So this is the conclusion of today, that uh, all electronic measurements performed so far are fully consistent with the standard model expectation. But uh, having understood uh, the most important standard model background for X uh, and new physics, we are ready to enter the new territory. And in the lectures of today in the afternoon, we start uh, addressing some of the searches for exotic uh, uh, channels in new physics and for supersymmetry. Thank you very much. Any questions? When you present the result for the top mass, uh, what mass uh, do they mean? Yeah, uh, it's a very good question. Uh, <laughs> it's not a, a, the, the, the top mass definition is a, is a concept which is a bit uh, tricky. Eh? We, we don't measure yes. exactly the, 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 the mass of the pole. This is why, for example, we, uh, we try to use this, uh, also this one. This would be the, the pole mass, but again, uh, you should correct the cross section for the, the, the pole uh, mass of the top. And if we'll be able to uh, reduce this uncertainty uh, sizably, this measurement together with the, with the, with the standard measurement measuring the top the mass uh, through the, uh, the electron channel or so single electron channel will give us additional constraint to the mass of the top. But is it, is it, it's true that it's, it's a bit tricky. We're not measuring the mass of, uh, as it is defined in, uh, in other single objects. So would, this is why it would require theory. Uh, so we cannot say that we measure the top mass uh, at half a GV without uh, theory without help from friend theorists. And this is it, absolutely. Okay, thank you. And the second question, uh, it's uh, maybe a little out of uh, the topic of the presentation. Uh, can you um, uh, say some words about the st status of, of forward and backward symmetry? Yeah, is, uh, this is a puzzle. I don't know if I have, uh, I have something in the background. Uh, so, for people that are not uh, uh, that are not uh, fully aware, there is uh, an anomaly measured uh, at the uh, at the tevatron, in which, uh, but I don't have too much. So, if you just please, uh, just come back. Sorry. I, th I think is the only is the only anomaly which survive uh, uh, several. Uh, Yet, Susie. Never, I never 
the, 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 the charge asymmetry in the top sector at the Tevatron Collider has shown a few sigma tension between prediction and uh, standard model prediction and measurements. And this was seen by both experiments, by uh, CDF and the zero, and it created quite uh, some excitement. It has been recently confirmed, uh, although numbers have changed a bit in the last uh, Morion conferences, and so this could be hint that something is happening and entering into the game, some new physics uh, particle. We are testing carefully this, and the problem we have is that uh, the production mechanism at LHC uh, does not allow us to distinguish easily uh, this, uh, this asymmetry. We are not sensitive enough. So the fact that we don't see any anomaly does not mean that the measurements from CDF and the zero are wrong means only that uh, at LHC with the PP production mechanism we have less sensitivity. So I am afraid that uh, if you want to say something conclusive or we have to wait uh, a lot of time with really huge statistics, maybe 2015, uh, higher energy that will help a bit uh, in this uh, study, or we have to wait uh, additional studies from the Tevatron colleagues uh, that are checking and checking again uh, all their uh, analysis. Uh, I don't see any anything uh, fishy in this analysis, frankly speaking. Uh, there, there is something, uh, I took a look myself uh, in, uh, in several aspects. Uh, it is very tricky, very difficult, uh, it's true, but there is no obvious uh, mistake or misunderstanding of the background. So I think it is uh, a serious uh, area in which we have to check uh, and uh, to project what is happening. Because this could be, again, the, the top as a source of new physics, any anomaly in the, in the top properties or in the top uh, work distribution with respect to the standard model prediction could be immediately sensitive to, to new particles. It could be a hint that there is new physics uh, at a few hundred GeV or a, a couple of TeV, but uh, too early to be, to be conclusive. Thank you. I expect more questions. Yeah. 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 I think again, this will depend. Uh, uh, there is a sociological aspect because uh, uh, I, I give you some numbers. For example, today we have in CMS uh, something like 1,000 students. No? The students are clearly the driving force of every analysis, as we know very well. Uh, 700 of them are focused on X. And so, uh, 300 are focused on all the rest, uh, SUSI, Exotica, uh, Electroic, Top, W. As a consequence of this, uh, uh, for example, the top group uh, is not a group of 200 people. Uh, it's a group in which we have maybe 30, 40 people. So we are not able to cover, frankly speaking, which, is, which seems to be crazy, because we are thousands of people. But we are not able to cover some of the most important topics. i give you another example. The, the W mass, eh? you have to measure the W mass. Uh, try to challenge the, 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 the excellent measurement that was done by CDF uh, D0 recently, that they measured the W mass with the 15, 20 MeV precision. It is possible at LHE to measure the W mass and probably to challenge this precision, but it requires maybe two, three years of work. And so now students have the possibility to publish a paper in eight months, maybe six months. Uh, clearly, most of the people choose uh, the, let's say, things that are uh, within uh, a few months of work, and uh, very likely what will happen, I expect that after this first wave, there will be a, a more solid and continuous effort in covering all this area, including the top uh, properties, including the electronic properties. So I, I would expect that in um, 2014, 15, with new energy, this will come. But uh, really, uh, I don't know if you have the impression that at LHC there are too many people, but we are still limited by manpower. It's, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, each new student that would come and uh, would like to contribute will find an uh, interesting job to be done, good papers to be published under his name as first author, which is crazy for you know, collaborations like Atos and CMS that have uh, 3,000 authors. But this, is, I can guarantee this is the case.
more questions? CMS and Atlas, because I don't want to advertise too much. And I think that, no, it's true. It's, uh, it's true also for Atlas. They, they clearly, uh, you will see we have discovered the Higgs, but this has required a huge effort. Basically, all resources have been used to, to have been concentrated in this goal. And clearly, we have paid the price because we, we have not been able to cover many other physics subjects that were absolutely important and are still absolutely important. This will come probably in the next few years. Yes, there is another one. Yeah. Does it mean that you plan to have uh, 1,050 papers in CMS? And more, probably more. We have already, we have already 250, 220 only on physics in the last two years. So we publish uh, typically 100, 150 papers per year, two per week. I, I will not be surprised in, uh, in, uh, in again, take CDF, uh, that the lifetime of the experiments lasted uh, uh, 20 years or more, so I'm... Um, it seems I, like you have to listen to some Yeah, but uh, with, again, uh, at LHC, mm -hmm. I, if I extrapolate over the next 20 years, probably, LHC will be running up to 2030, I would not be surprised at the end of the lifetime to, to exceed the 1,000 publications. <laughs> Difficult to read all of them. I try. <laughs> but maybe I have also a, a small question. Uh, what kind of BSN uh, theories uh, you are sensitive to when you are studying uh, electroweak physics, stock physics? Uh, uh, if uh, there are some uh, BSN theories which probably somewhere close to uh, sensitivity. Yeah, yeah, there are many, there are many, many. For example, uh, one of the first things we did, but this we did uh, immediately, is, is to look at the TT bar uh, invariant mass distribution, uh, which extends at LHE up to uh, 700 uh, GeV. So a bump could be a possible resonance, for example, decaying to TT bar, a broad resonance at 700, 800 GeV, like the ones uh, uh, foreseen by uh, Manopoulos and others, uh, could appear as a broad, uh, a broad bump in uh, the TT bar in various mass distributions. Not to talk about the flavor change in the current or the case. Uh, and also the, the, the uh, be four back of asymmetry is, uh, is another area in which you can have uh, uh, you can have heavy particle entering the Z prime, entering the loop, uh, and the change in the distribution of the the charge asymmetry at the top uh, works. So you said Z prime, so probably yeah. supersymmetry. No, supersymmetry. Supersymmetry is different. Uh, the easiest is uh, some heavy resonances, new bosons appearing around uh, one G, one TV or lower. This was it is the most natural way that could appear since the top is the heaviest element. It will be natural to decay to TT bar pair. And uh, so you look for top decaying hadronically because you need high statistics and you look uh, in the tails of the distributions if it is uh, exponentially falling or if it is any kind of bump. And then you could leave it because you don't see that. Then there are other, I mean, it's, it's, top is really, um, in my view, again, could be my prejudice, but I think uh, that um, if we don't, uh, again, this will come next lecture today, but uh, all supersymmetry or other uh, models, new physics, will appear suddenly, uh, that I don't think will be the case today, I think uh, that it will be much tougher, or we have to use uh, um, what we know of the electroweak physics, including the standard model X boson, um, to study with high precision all the characteristics. Uh, for me, this is becoming the golden path to new physics. If we win the lottery and we discover uh, stop at 1.2 TV, fine, that, that's easy, life will be easy. But I would not consider it the most challenging scenario. Assume that this is not the case. Assume that uh, uh, if uh, supersymmetry exists, is it then very high scale, could be. Then the only way in which you can get information is to go through precision measure. I think we, are, we, are, we need to go through precision measurements at LHC of uh, top, uh, of the Higgs, uh, Everything in other experiment, rare decays could be rare decays in the, in the field.
flavor sector, it could be mu and gamma, could be, I mean, this will be, in my view, the golden path to understand uh, if there is a new scale of energy at which uh, the standard model breaks or not. So the number that impressed me was uh, these uh, 700 students working on X. So how you can find works for 700? Uh, this is an interesting question because it's, uh, it, was, it didn't came for free. Uh, we, uh, I will describe it maybe a bit in the last lecture, but just to anticipate. The, once the, the accelerator was uh, uh, past incident, in 2008, uh, we had to change completely the strategy uh, of looking for the X. I don't know how many of you uh, will believe it, but uh, I could count on a, on a, with a hand the number of people that were confident to discover the standard model X boson at 7 TV. With the machine running at 7 TV, everybody thought, forget it. It will be impossible to discover it. Eh? I remember very well hot discussions within CMS or outside. What happened in CMS and in Atlas, uh, I remember very well uh, together with Fabiola, we opened a discussion and we say, look, okay, now we have a machine running at 7 TV. No matter what, let's make an attempt. But you had to change the strategy. The previous strategy was to discover this boson in a single channel with 5 C. 14 TV, 10 to 34 luminosity, easy. 7 TV and 10 to 32, 33, it requires that you put together hundreds of channels. If you want to discover something, you cannot rely on a single channel. You put together 10 ma major decay modes. In each decay mode, you have four, five sub-channels, and you easily end up, if you have two or three people working in each one of these sub-channels, you end up easily to have work for hundreds of people. And this was exactly the, the case. Remember also that we had uh, the high mass region to be covered, which is again, we didn't know that uh, this boson was in the low mass region. We expected it was in the low mass region, but we had also to keep an eye up to one, one TV. So really, if I, if I see now, uh, I see uh, in the X uh, group, uh, seven, eight uh, major subgroups, uh, each one uh, covering a decay mode uh, of particular interest, but if I go through the sub-channels that are needed, sub-categories that are needed, I will describe them in tomorrow's lecture, five or four people in each sub-channel ends up to become 500 people easy. Plus professors, plus something working not for full time, and then you end up with this. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing to see this is not... Uh, it's not visible outside, but this discovery was really a collective enterprise by hundreds and hundreds of people that worked like crazy for months and months, eh? uh, in following a dream that was considered completely hopeless uh, since uh, a few months ago. And now everybody is, uh, is, uh, is happy, but uh, we, we have been through interesting moments. <laughs> More questions? No? Thank you to speaker.